Hello everyone, welcome to another podcast at Yet. Um, so today I have with me Emelda Vireri. Am I pronouncing it right? Yes. <laughs> oh, okay, so I'm here with uh, Emelda, um, who will be also taking us through what she does um, and what inspires her since we are celebrating International Women's Month. Mm-hmm. So welcome, Emelda. Thank you, Tilly. It's good to be here. Thank you so much for joining us. So um, for me, for my benefit, and also the people who are watching this podcast, yes. can you tell us about yourself, your background, mm-hmm. and what is it exactly that you do? Okay. So the full name is Imelda Vivi Mahachi. I'm a Mahachi now because I'm married, but you can call me Mel. I, I wear so many hats, so it's very difficult for me to explain exactly what I do. But I think to sum it up, I'm a cultivator of lives. I, I want to see lives sharpened. You know, I sow a seed in whatever I'm doing, and then I want to know a see it grow. So I'm a cultivator of lives. And I'm a firm believer of sisters pulling each other up and not down. So in whatever space that I'm in, I'm... I make sure I'm intentional about supporting sisters. So as we're talking about Women's Month, International Women's Day, I'm in the right place today. Uh, So what I do, I think I'll zero in more on the emotional wellness side of things. So I'm a consultant in that area. But I've also started, I started a community about five years ago, which is called the Invaluable Woman Exhale Community. Mm -hmm. So basically what we're saying is as women, there's so many roles that we have, you know, so many expectations. Your mother, your daughter, your sister, your wife, your, mm-hmm. your all these things. And yet, you've got to take time to pour into your cup and recharge your battery. Because I think a lot of women are running on empty and mm-hmm. that's a problem. <laughs> that's I a can problem. relate to that. Yeah. Maybe I, I should join you because I you need should, to recharge. You should. <laughs> but then, yeah. is it something that you have always... Ex- inspired to do or aspired to do or is it something that you picked up when you were growing up and you saw an opportunity for you to venture into that Mm -hmm. so my life has been a journey um, that is a bit I don't say biased towards girls and women but in a way it is because of what I experienced growing up Mm -hmm. Um, my mom I I was raised by a single mom most of the part before she passed away Mm -hmm. and I've got sisters we are six in our family five girls and one boy so seeing women facing different situations in my mm. life made me start initiatives to develop the woman. And initially it was just general, you know, general developing of the woman. But when I started to go through my journey, I realized that I was processing uh, grief. So I, I wrote a book called Beauty for My Ashes, Rising Like a Phoenix from the Ashes of Grief. Mm. And when I started that journey of writing the book and also venturing into grief counseling, I then realized there's so much more than just mm. the grief and so women need spaces where they can come and their emotional wellness is catered for and we look at it in a wholesome way because a person is made out of body mind spirit mm. and so we are intentional about making sure we are you know, fostering that in women to say hey take care of your body take care of your emotional state and take care of your spirit because those are important so I'd say it was inspired mainly by my experiences and I wouldn't start sharing everything that I've gone through because mm-hmm. it would take the whole day. Mm-hmm. But in the journey and what I've faced, I've realized that beauty can come out of ashes. You know, pain mm-hmm. can be turned into power. But it take, takes support. It takes having people just holding your hand and saying, hey, you're going to mm-hmm. come out of this and you're going to come out stronger. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, I've been inspired to do that. And when I studied psychology, because that was my first degree, I realized that there's so much to us as people and not just for women even men mm. um, facing a lot of issue challenges in society today i'll just pick the financial aspect hey mm. zimbabweans i think at this point would say amen mm. you know? there are a lot of challenges but that that just doesn't strain your pocket it strains your mental health it strains mm. your relationships even so you are just in this depression and anxiety and you know so people really need help to deal with the emotional wellness and mental health Mm. I'm very touched because this is the conversation that we don't usually have mm. in public because also especially for men because they are sort of uh, shaped or when they are groomed yeah. not to share their emotional state or express their emotions mm. on anything especially when it comes to finances and also because we have also set societal standards when it comes to men and their finances yeah. um, but then I want to pick your brain in this would you say um, it's only societal factors that have contributed to the imbalance in emotional and mental well-being especially of the young people in Zimbabwe Mm. right now okay so um, before I I touch on that you know when you mentioned the aspect of men my master's degree dissertation 
talked to men, like I did a research, mm. and a lot of men are depressed, and you find that it's issues, finances, marriages, jolo, mm. <laughs> issues like that. And so, as much as we are doing a lot of girls and women programs, you know, we've also started to cater for for the boy child because he's also important. I thought mm. I, I should mention that. Um, so, for the reasons, I'd say. Society, yes, plays a role, but it starts from an individual um, mm. level. A lot of people attach importance to things differently. Uh, and so before we even go to how the society influences them, as a person, what is, what is my standpoint? What, well, how do I perceive a certain topic? And then, yes, it then comes to the society. So I'd say individual level, societal level. Um, people are, are scared of what they don't know. So the topic of emotional wellness and mental health is like a topic that has been shelved. And so when people try to dive into it, they're scared to say, what will I find out if I start looking at this? Or it's a white people topic, mm. especially for Africans. It's, it's something that's coming from afar. Mm. I, I did a session here at Yet uh, some other time and some gentleman just said, you know, this is, this is like a concept that white people want to force on mm. us. And I was just like... It's mm. sad because when you feel sad, when you feel depressed and anxious, there's a white person in the room. Mm. You, know, mm. you know, these are things that we go through as people. So I'd say, yeah, but society plays a major, major role. Mm. Society plays. Because with society, we're looking at the school level. At school, we're not even talking about issues of emotional wellness or mental mm. health. True. In the church, even, most of the stuff will then be, you know, mm. it's a demon. But it's a, I get you. It's an illness that mm. it's like a headache mm. that people take pills for. With depression, people can be described meds as well, and they go through counseling. So I think we have a lot to tackle in the society at different levels, even in the home, you know, and the communities that we live. Yeah. Mm. I like that. I like that because I think it's one of the topics that I've always wanted to engage in. Mm -hmm. um, but then can you tell us again about your constituency or your target group yeah. at what age, especially for your Excel and recharge uh, programs, what, do you, what age group do you look at? Age group. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's, it's divided really. So we're looking at the girls and then the women. So with the girls, we usually start with the teenagers. Um, we have what we call the pull as I rise classes. So as truly when you've gotten to a certain level of understanding, you're pulling your little sister up in different you know topics mm. so that's for teenagers you find for your uh, we did 13 but then parents were like can we do 12 yes. as well mm. because you know they're now getting into yes. here in zim we say form one mm. for, for other countries i'm not so sure but yeah so 12 to about 80 and then we have another group which is like your 19 to your 25 they're in their own um, mm. phase and then you've got mm. going up so it's like I don't want to say it's like everyone, <laughs> but yeah, yeah it, it is. It so everyone. we just make sure that the programs that we have are specific to the needs of the particular group. And we have, um, so we do in-city sessions, but we also do outreaches as well. We've had orphanages that we've partnered with. We have teen moms, safe houses that we've partnered with, um, people in marginalized areas as well. So we bring it in the context of as Shona people, we have to start breaking it down. When you're feeling a certain way, what does it mean? And But there is so much work to do because when you say depression, to you, you might understand. But in the Shona culture, we actually don't have a word that describes depression. Mm. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. Um, is it the only thing that you do? So you did say that you are now a missus. <laughs> what are the, in your heads, apart from doing um, yeah. this program, is there anything else that you do? That I do, yeah. So. Like I said, at first I said I cultivate lives, so there's an organization that we run that's called Cultivate Africa, which is your youth development aspect. So we're saying we want to cultivate lives of young people to be part of the decision making in the country and in the continent. Because I believe that for Africa to be totally transformed, it's the young people that mm. need to be equipped. So there's mm. that part. And then I'm also a pastor. Ah, amen. <laughs> <laughs> amen. I, I pass. So that's that's the core part of who I am. Mm. Some of the things are programs, but at the core of who I am, my spirituality is at the center. Oh, okay. So how do you balance? Because now I know you studied psychology. Mm -hmm. You are advocating for mental health and yeah. emotional being. You are a pastor. Ah, you have a lot of congregation. I know they call you in the middle of the <laughs> night and be like, my lady, I'm going through the senses. How are you juggling all of that? All of that. So over time, it's not something that I woke up saying I can do it. Even now, I'm still growing and learning. But I, I set boundaries for things. Mm. Uh, when it comes to 
family time, you know, when I get home, I usually put my phones on silent. Or mm -hmm. if it's an urgent one, then I know, you know, they will reach my husband too, if it's, it's okay. important like mm -hmm. that. But I set times to say, you know, I'm dealing with work on this uh, particular time. Family time is important, so I have to come to my family at certain, certain times. So it's just, someone once talked about how our lives are like boxes. So the boxes are stacked, but you should know which box to pull out at a particular time. Mm -hmm. So that I can balance, like you said, and I'm not pouring into just one element of life to say, mm -hmm. I need to get money, I need to get money, and then everything else suffers. Mm -hmm. But if it's time to say, okay, let's grind and let's make money, we take that box out, what are we doing? Mm -hmm. For how long are we doing it? And then when we're doing, you know, whether it's the counseling and, yeah, and then obviously spending time with my baby. <laughs> <laughs> then we have our own time of connecting as husband and wife. Mm. That's great. I think we can learn a lot from that because some of us are, are struggling to juggle work, mm -hmm. being a mom or being a wife and being a Christian, sometimes being part of church because yeah. that's one, I think that's one of the elements that contribute to who we are, mm -hmm. right? And especially if you if you, you have a role in church that you play because it comes with a lot of criticism it does. It does. and especially if you are from a, a patriarchal society then you have to break boundaries mm. to make sure that you fit in. So how do we access your organization if one like me who is not, doesn't know that it has a mental health problem, mm. doesn't know but he knows or is aware that I am going through some emotional stuff some emotional also because stuff. it's triggered by something that is recently happening but you don't know that it has been really mm. going on. How do mm -hmm. we access? Okay, so you can go on our Facebook page. Uh, mm -hmm. It's Invaluable Woman Exhale. Exhaling as in breathing mm -hmm. in. Yeah. Um, or also emailing us on exhale and recharge consultancy at gmail.com. And then the number that they can use, um, which we prefer more of messages. Uh, okay. So it's 0774 828 288. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, so we, sorry, we do work with different partners. So for things that we can't do as an organization, because we also tap into a pool of professional counselors from mm. different organizations. So we will refer them to um, professionals that we, we partner with in different spaces. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, before we wrap up, since mm -hmm. we are celebrating Women's Month, mm -hmm. um, what are your highlights? Or what are you celebrating about yourself first before we can say end your victories <laughs> as your woman with many heads? What can you share with us? Well, I'll say I maximized my 20s, you know. Mm. I'm now in my 30s. Uh, you've grown <laughs> but <old>. <laughs> I, <laughs> Hey, I'm still young. <laughs> so I, I, I celebrate that I maximized my 20s. I ran with the quote that said, if they don't give you a seat at the table, bring your folding chair. Mm. I brought my folding chair. Mm. I did what I needed to do. I made a name for myself got awards, et cetera, et cetera. And now that I'm in my 30s, I've shifted. I'm now creating tables for others to bring their folding chairs. Mm -hmm. So for me, it's no longer about bulldozing my way into spaces, but I'm creating opportunities for sisters like me to also flourish. So I celebrate that about me. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for joining us and for coming through. I will definitely be, be bringing my folding chair yeah, definitely yeah. to your table. <laughs> you and I listening there to the 40th cast, you need to bring your, uh, your folding chair because we have Emelda here who has prepared a table for us. Until next time, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Ah, I'm